This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 308. Keep your eyes on the prize, part one, by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Happy middle of the week Wednesday. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. Now, before we get to it, don't forget that we give away books to random people on our mailing list on the first of the month, and that's coming up soon. To be in the raffle, just make sure you've joined the email list at oldpodcast.com before then. I'll give you another quick reminder at the end of the show. So for now, let's hear today's post and start optimizing your life. Keep your eyes on the prize, part one, by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. When most are introduced to the fitness industry, especially in regards to strength training, bodybuilding, and general fitness, most crash head-on with a Mack truck full of information overload. The typical enthusiast has been exposed to thousands of ads for overhyped supplements through all forms of media, magazines, the internet, and television, just to name a few. Then we have the word-of-mouth communication that's merely information someone got from someone else. As the message is passed along, it typically evolves into something completely different than the original idea communicated. For many, fitness and strength training is merely a hobby. For a few, it's a competitive sport. However, for a lot more, it's become a complicated and frustrating endeavor. Most develop an interest in this lifestyle because they desire to improve their health or change their body in a positive manner. During the educational process, there's often a plethora of viewpoints, ideas, and dogmas a person has to sift through in order to find the truth. The sad reality is many never find it and give up on a pursuit that has the potential to change their life in many ways. For the most part, the rules are simple. Anyone can become stronger, leaner, and in better shape than their current state, even advanced athletes. There's always room for growth and improvement in some form or fashion. When I was younger, I wish I had access to the information that shaped my current views. I would have been able to sidestep many of the errors I've made along the way in my personal fitness journey. After lots of trial and error, my entire outlook changed when I developed a long-term approach and thought process that was congruent with where I currently am and where I wish to be. Today, let's dig into some information that, if you take it to heart, could help you progress at a much faster rate as opposed to the common wheel spinning often associated with the shotgun, trial and error approach. The rules have not changed. Regardless of whether you're a strength athlete or a bodybuilder, your training program and philosophy is what makes or breaks your success. As we ponder the biggest and strongest athletes, there's obviously something they've all done correctly. Somewhere down the road, they either got really lucky or simply made the right choices. I believe it was the latter. First off, Let's go back in time and take a look at the famous Reg Park and Steve Reeves. In my opinion, and I'm sure many others will agree, these guys attained near-perfect physiques. Their training was hardly considered quote-unquote bodybuilding training for today's standards, and they were the bodybuilders of their day. Instead of a typical body part split, these guys did full body work in the lower rep ranges. Ever heard of the timeless 5x5 training? These guys were all about it. As time passed, different methodologies gained popularity. High-intensity training that consisted of both low-volume and low-frequency, all the way up to what's known as German-volume training, where projectile vomiting almost always ensued post-leg training. The main point is this. While there are a few different ways to skin a cat, the rules have not changed. The most muscular guys are almost always the strongest. They're the ones who've put in the time, effort, and simply made things happen, which leads me to my next point. How come some seem to build a hefty amount of strength and mass while others continue on with mediocre results at best? Paralysis by analysis. Anytime a person becomes eager to learn something new and make significant progress, the process of self-study is typically soon to follow. While taking the time to learn and develop is every shade of wonderful, it can come back to bite us in the rump if we forget to practice some caution. Especially for the beginner and even the seasoned intermediate, there will likely come a time when one begins their search for the ideal training split or the perfect nutritional guidelines. You can find these individuals wasting their spare time on message boards and magazines and their evenings will often extend past the midnight hour, scouring other forms of media in hopes of garnering the information necessary to propel them into their next phase of strength or bodybuilding training. 
While education is absolutely wonderful and pertinent, sometimes we know too much for our own good. Sometimes the plethora of data we attempt to absorb can put a damper on our ability to make a sound decision. Do I train more frequently or should I rest more often? Will doing deadlifts earlier in the week help or hinder my progress on my squat workout on Friday? What if I mix chocolate milk in my protein shake post-workout as opposed to waxy maize and hydro whey? Will I still produce an anabolic effect? While these questions might seem silly to some, they're just a small sample of what's going on through the minds of those looking to quote-unquote get things right. Therefore, since we already have many tried and true principles that are proven to produce results for both hypertrophy training and strength training, there's no need to be confused or to be misguided. Simply look back on what's worked in the past and what's producing results for the majority. Chances are, if it worked for them, it will work for you too. If full body 5x5 training was sufficient for the greats who were indeed very advanced for their time, why does someone who's only been training a few years need to adopt an incredibly complex split to produce similar results? There's one answer. They don't. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's important to know where you're going. The only way to get from point A to point B is through a simple process of setting many small goals that eventually create huge results. Just remember, these goals must be both achievable for you and of course, they must be realistic for the time frame and your personal expectations. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Keep Your Eyes on the Prize by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. When you find yourself frustrated with your workout, when you realize you're not getting the results anymore that you wish you were getting, it can be helpful to simply go back to the basics, as JC mentioned. A week or so ago, I answered a question about hitting a plateau when it comes to weight management and weight loss. The same rules can apply when you hit that strength plateau. Mix things up, and sometimes mixing things up means going back to the basics. Now, it was also mentioned that if something's worked in the past and producing results from the majority, then it's possible it might work for you too. What I would say is, of course, just be careful. We don't wanna necessarily become lemmings and start doing moves that everybody else is doing, but your instinct is telling you, ooh, that might hurt me. Ooh, I don't feel comfortable with that. So again, just be careful and make sure that you're doing moves that you feel comfortable with because an injury can set you back for a long time. Now, as promised, once again, if you wanna be in raffles to possibly win books from us, make sure you're on our weekly newsletter at oldpodcast.com. What's great is you'll get some free spreadsheet tools from us right away, then a weekly email with updates, and you'll be in the raffles automatically. The next one is in about 10 days, if you can believe it. Again, you can find that all at oldpodcast.com. Thank you, as always, for listening. I'll see you back here in about 24 hours to finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, And together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.